Hey, um, so we're here with uh, my buddy Joe, hey. and he graciously offered to bring by a couple of speaker cabinets uh, that he had custom made, right? Custom, well, I, order, I ordered this empty cabinet and I customized them myself. Okay, so empty cabs and then customized. To me, that's custom built. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll check them out. But as we were setting up, we were chatting about stuff. And I was like, you know, whoa, 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 time out. We gotta like set this up because, you know, somebody might find it interesting. Uh, but anyway, so what were we chatting about? Uh, uh, the tone and everything. Sure. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, so we were talking about, you know, the different cabs that he brought and how, you know, they sound a certain way and everything. And then I said, well, you know, what ends up happening is the sound of everything is like a cumulative type of a thing. So, you know, I use like a stainless steel metal guitar pick and it definitely has a certain sound. So, although that sort of sets the stage of the sound, you know, that I'm gonna get, it, every single step gets morphed and twisted and, you know, so like how much is the tone of my guitar pick really there in the end result. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and we were chatting about like the cabinets, how even if we swap out the exact speakers, the speakers in that cabinet over there, the 212, will sound different in this 212. You know, different so there's a construction. Lot of, as you were saying, right. there's a lot of variables. You know, even that, you, were, you were saying anywhere between the guitar and the speakers and even within the cabinets themselves, just staying with the cabinet itself. I'm sure there's different wiring inside your cabinet versus my cabinet. Yeah. Uh, I know the airflow is going to be different. The, 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 the speakers uh, are going to have more room to breathe if the, the uh, cabinet is deeper. Right. I think I saw your cab's a closed back too, right? Yes. So that's a closed back. This one's an open back, which again is going to contribute gonna, to right. the Right, yes, yes. Um, and uh, depending if they're up on little rubber feet. Yep, that's true too. Because um, yep. I did a video, uh, you know, like I, I've done a video on like, you name it, I've done a video on it probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but where I had my son lift up the speaker cabinet. So he put it down on the floor. I played, you know, just, you know. Then he lifted it up and I went, he put it back down. And there's a gigantic difference if it's like, I guess mechanically coupled mm -hmm. to the wood floor with like the small thin rug on it as opposed to just in the air coupled to basically nothing, you know? So like every single element changes, you know? And, and then you end up with like, you know, well, what, what, are, you, what are you chasing and what is the path to that end result, like, is there one? Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> I think everyone's chasing the what sounds best to them, and and it might just be people trying to develop their own sound, or there's a lot of guitarists that are chasing, you know, the tone of someone else. If they're like, oh, hey, you know, I like this song, and I want I want to learn this song, but not only do I want to want to learn this song, I want my tone to sound exactly like the album. Right. And they'll, they'll chase that by, you know, they'll buy, oh, he uses this pedal or that pedal. Or, uh, you know, a lot of people get into the modeling amps. who are like, oh, he uses a 65, yeah. uh, whatever. And we'll, they'll, they'll chase it that way. Uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely, I think, you know, as I was saying before, you know, I, I've only started playing seriously for, for five or six years now. But there's so many ways to get lost in not only you know just hitting the notes but you know getting the sound and getting into the the tech of hey yeah you know i can play or i want to learn how to play but i want to learn how to do my own setups i want to learn how to put in my own pickups i want to yeah. learn how to build my own cabinets yeah so there's there's so many facets of once you decide that you're going to get into an instrument beyond just being able to hit the notes there's a lot more to explore yeah Oh yeah, there's, there's so much. Um, as we were chatting, I think um, we, we diverge 
a bit early on in the path. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> uh, and we'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll, you know, pull out the guitar that you brought, which you were telling me some interesting stuff about. But um, I, I played a show where the guy's like, okay, you know, the sound guy, okay, can I hear a guitar? So I'm like, yeah, sure. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, like rip out solos and stuff. So I'm just like, you know, just some basic chords, some single notes. And he goes, okay, great, thank you. Um, can you run through some patches? And I was like, I'm so, to the microphone, excuse me, uh, what? He's like, run through some patches. I'm like, are, are you saying patches? He's like, patches. I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. What do you mean? You know, because he's the sound guy. He's running the show, and I don't want to, you know, like upset him. But I'm like, I, I don't, what, do you, what is a pat? What is a patches? He was talking about the different sounds for the different songs. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, when he said that, I'm like, oh, there's no patches. And he's like, well, what, what about, like, just what different sounds are you going to have? I'm like, this one? Okay, <laughs> yeah, well, volume all the way up, volume down about two, you know, to about eight, volume down to like six-ish, volume, you know, like barely up so it's somewhat sort of clean, and like those are the sounds, like what? what? Like I might, you know, the tone a little bit as I go, but, you know, so I thought that, that was kind of funny, but you were saying how, um, you know, when you got your first, like, big boy guitar, <laughs> you know, how you had, like, all the, you had different options with it. So, let's grab that. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about this. Sure. So, so it's a reverend. So this, yeah, this is a reverend. It's called the Double Agent. And, uh, double agent. Double agent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think that the, the reason <laughs> I think the reasoning behind the the, the naming is it up, up top it has a, a P90 and it's got mm -hmm. a humbucker down the bottom. Yeah. And so when when I wanted to invest in my first you know non entry level guitar, I kind of want to get the most uh, bang for my buck. Mm -hmm. So I played a bunch of different stuff and and what kind of turned me on to this was the, the versatility and Hey, it's got a P90 in it, it's got a humbucker in it, and it also has a, a bass roll-off. Mm -hmm. So with the bass roll-off, you can almost get that single coil kind of sound yeah. to it. It's got a humbucker, it's not, it, I mean, it's not a chugger, uh, it's, it's not a, a super high gain uh, humbucker, mm -hmm. but it's got some nice uh, humbucker tones to it. And then if I want to play some clean single lines, I can switch up to the P90 and get some nice, nice tones there too. It's fun, it's a fun little guitar. Interesting. Um, and what pickups are in it? Are they just the stock pickups? These are the stock pickups, yeah. Okay. Because um, I think uh, you, you mentioned Billy Corgan had... So originally, what I originally was going to do was, was, was fix up the entry level guitar that I had. And yes. uh, being a fan of Smashing Pumpkins and Billy Corgan, I knew that he had some signature pickups. Yeah. And when I uh, did my research, I learned that he no longer did that, but he had partnered with Reverend to make a signature guitar. Okay. Uh, it was a little out of my price range, uh, but it got me introduced to the brand, yeah. and I started playing a bunch of uh, different models, and, and really I couldn't decide on, on what I wanted, and this one kind of gave me a little bit of, of everything mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, having both the P90 and the, the humbucker in it. But yeah, these are, these are the stock, uh, I think they use uh, real, I, my other guitar has rail hammer uh, pickups in it. I'm yeah. not sure if that's a rail hammer or not. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I know they're what bare knuckle, right? Are those uh, the rail hammers or? I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, it, like I said, it was it was a good. You know, I I wanted something that had some versatility, and you know, ev everyone's got uh, you know everyone's got a strat, everyone's got a Les Paul. So okay. like, well, what's what's something a little bit different? Yeah. Um, and this this one uh, I enjoy it. Cool. Yeah, I have, you know, this has the single coil here. Uh, it's actually stacked. Okay. You know, but it's a, a very kind of single coil-ish type sound. And I really don't like it at all. <laughs> because it's it sounds totally different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, I, I just want a sound. And that's the sound that I want. And I'll adjust 
the gain with the volume and mm -hmm. I'll adjust the tone a bit with the tone control and that's really it. You know, but you seem to like want all those different options and things. You know, I it, I get way too confused. So for, for I'm like, me, I just want to sound yeah. <laughs> and deal with that and <laughs> for I mean, for me it was it was more uh, my transition into wanting to play more serious and being uh, you know like wanting it all at the same time of mm -hmm. hey there's so much there's so much more out there and like I don't have like the ability to invest in all these different types of guitars so yeah. what can I do that's going to give me the opportunity to play a guitar that has you know this or has that or has that yeah. all in the the same guitar yeah yeah well you know because like somebody like um you know I, I've always been amazed somebody like uh Keith Richards Mm -hmm. You know, you see him, he's playing a Telecaster. Okay, cool. And then he's playing a Les Paul. And then he's playing a Strat. And then he's playing something else. And, he's play and I'm like, I can't, I, I, can't, I can't handle that. It's like, you know, I, I always just have a Strat, a humbucker in the bridge. The switch has to be here, because that's exactly where I expect it to be when I'm playing. Mm -hmm. uh, the volume here is always in the way. So I just put the volume down here in one tone, so it's just one volume and one tone control for all the pickups. Um, Scallop fretboard, you know, in anything different than all of this, I can't, I, I get, I get, I, I, I guess, I can't, I get lost. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, fun. It's, it, it, it's too much to remember. <laughs> no, it, it's funny that you say that because I, I have an acoustic as well and, and the, the fret spacing and especially the width of the fretboard between my acoustic and this, it's almost like I need to relearn the guitar when I okay. switch to my acoustic. So generally if I'm working on, uh, if I'm working on something, I'll work on like for, for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, whatever I'm working on, I'll just stay with that, with that guitar. Because mm -hmm. if I switch back and forth between my acoustic and, and this one, like just, I, I just end up having to, to retrain myself just because I'm so, that, that muscle memory is that I'm so used to, you know, when I land something where I'm supposed to be, and then I pick up my acoustic and it's like I'm not even hitting the strings anymore. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really weird. Like, I, I know I can go into, uh, you know, guitar shop and just not even take a guitar down just it's hanging there and you just kind of go like this nope <laughs> nope 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 okay maybe you know and then take that one down and kind of go no nope. you know and go to the next one the next maybe take it down and, oh okay yeah possibly and then plug it in and I'm now 20 some odd guitars down the line, you know, just because I know exactly what I want. And yeah. It's just that feel. Any variation. Yeah, well, I, I, I totally hear you. My brother's got, I want to say it's, it's a PRS and it looks identical to a Strat. And I picked it up and the, 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 the fretboard was so much more flat. And just to go from the, the, the uh, I, I, I know there's a lot of the, uh, you know the geometry. Uh, they they all have different names for the uh, you know the flatness of the of the neck mm -hmm. and whatever what, the the curvature. The curve, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. I, um, like nine and a quarter. Uh, oh, sorry, seven and a quarter. I think was like original um, Fender. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's you know like. <laughs> yep, yep. And then like nine or nine and a half, and then it's like twelve, which is like a Gibson, and even like sixteen or twenty, which is like almost seems perfectly flat yeah and to go and, and my brother he's more of a shredder than 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 mm -hmm. i am so he prefers that uh that, flat. that perfectly flat neck yeah and yeah. i go from you know a, a traditional strat to uh whatever his guitar was it wasn't it they, they looked identical like the thing looked like a strat and you pick it up and i'm like this is this is like, it, like i feel like i'm playing a board like right. it was just just completely flat it was completely right flat. right if i if i play a fretboard that's perfectly flat, like, you know, the optical illusion sort of, <laughs> it actually seems like it's almost concave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so weird. You're like, you look at it, you're like, what in the world is happening? Yeah, it's like really bizarre, you know, but like I, one, I don't really care about the different sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've gone through 
countless guitars, countless pickups, countless necks. Um, shocking how much the neck changes the sound of a guitar. Yep. Absolutely yep. shocking. I discovered that. I was like, um, but you know, so many um, amps in speaker cabinets, in speakers, in and out of different cabinets, and you know, just to end up with okay. And, and, and at one point, I, I had to just kind of draw the line and go, okay, you know, I'm looking around and I have just cabinets stacked to the ceiling. I have raw speakers littered in the corners of the <laughs> rooms, you know, that I've swapped in and out. So many guitars, so many pickups, so much soldering and, you know, that like, okay, you know what? This is really good and I'm just going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're... It, and I have a few different amps and a few different guitars. Um, well, I have tons of different amps, tons of, but a few that I really like. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, I'll go and, oh, I'm going to plug into this here. And I'm like, man, I love this sound. It's so good. And then after a few weeks, I'm like, eh, you know, I'm going to plug back into, you know, my Marshall and be like, you know, why did I even bother with that amp? But, like, it's the newness. And right, yep. Like, I just have to go, you know, this is my setup, and, you know. But it's but, so, fun so, so apparently you, you like there. the different <laughs> options and things. I like, to, I, mean, I, like to, I like to dabble and, and sort of understand what's out there, but I, I, I agree with you. There's something to be said for, you know, this is my tone, and, mm -hmm. and locking into that, and, uh, and, and di dialing in what you have to get the tone that you want, so you can yeah. focus on playing. Yeah, um, I know I just did a video, um, and then we'll kind of wrap this up and sure. start listening to some of these, <clears throat> on setting the tone controls, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you saw that. That one? No, I did not see that one, no. If you set them all the way up, mm -hmm. it schematically, electronically, whatever, it, it takes the controls the most out of the circuit as possible. Okay. So the most direct line through the circuit. And... Uh, then if you subtract what you don't want to get your tone, I feel I get a better sound. Okay. And I did that video and, you know, we're talking about like all the different things that can change the sound. And even just all the misinformation, there were some people that like literally were like so triggered, you know, to use the, you know, the, the, the new word, you know, that's come out the last few years. Yeah. But I mean, they like, like verbally attacked me at how wrong I was. So I had to actually make a video saying, okay, this technically, like the bass control all the way up, takes that bass control as much out of the circuit as possible. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You know, in like, but it's crazy, like the misinformation, you know, and I, I really think just the bottom line is if it works for you, it works for you. Yep. No, I agree. It's just a matter of, you know, try the, all the knobs are there with, you know, infinite number of, of combinations to just to, to find the tone that you're looking for. And right. that's really, you know, that's 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 part of the, the fun is exploring, uh, exploring what you have to see what you can get, what you can get out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's uh, listen to some of the stuff. Sounds great. So.